Every time I get a new 3D printer filament, I print a little pug. And I add a number sticker to his butt and keep track of it in a spreadsheet. They're like color samples. And so whenever I want to print something new, I can just look at my pugs and find the colors that I like uh, using the spreadsheet. A lot of these came from a MakerBox subscription, which comes once a month and it's just filament samples. Enough filament to probably print maybe five or so pugs with each sample that they send. What I get is the Everything box, which includes their other two subscriptions. Uh, they have MakerBox Easy, which is just gonna be four PLA filaments. PLA is like the standard filament that is really easy to print, very accessible, very beginner friendly. And the other subscription box is their Everything box, which is four filaments that are usually something else, something unusual, or something a little bit more challenging to print. So this should have eight filaments, uh, four PLAs and four something else. So we're gonna open it up, see what's inside there, and print out some pugs and just add to my little pug army here. All right, here we go. Looks like we're gonna start with the unusual filaments. Let's dig down and get the basic PLX. So these are the um, easy collection, the PLAs that should be pretty easy to print for anybody. Looks like they're not very well wrapped this time. So it looks like these are by eSun. That's a brand I'm very familiar with. I got a bunch of their filaments. A very nice kind of bluish dark green. Very pretty color. A transparent sparkle. I don't have anything like that, so that's pretty cool. A fairly uninteresting purple. And pink. Very nice bubblegum pink. I don't think I have any pinks quite this color. All right, so now we get to the four things from the everything box, the more interesting, more challenging filaments. So this is from Push Plastic, which I'm not familiar with, PMMA, which I have not printed with. It says that this material has the ability to smooth with acetone. So I've seen this, you like put it in a, like a jar uh, with acetone fumes. You don't dip this in the acetone, but you put it around acetone and the fumes in the acetone give it a smooth finish. Um, I have some acetone, but not here at the shop, so maybe we'll have to give that a try. All right, 3D Fuel, Refuel Pro PLA. We've taken our PLA scraps and out of spec material, transition material, and cut off waste and ground it into pellets that we can use to make filament. Okay, so it's actually just a recycled filament, so the color must be an amalgamation of all those other colors. I'm not sure what makes it a Pro PLA, but anyways, that should be easy to print with. Snow Labs is a company I'm not familiar with. PC, polycarbonate. I don't know if I printed polycarbonate. Oh, you know what? Enclosure and ventilation advised, which I have neither of those. So ventilation meaning that it gives off some fumes which are going to be toxic or at least unpleasant. Um, and an enclosure, what they want for that is that you enclose a 3D printer so that it keeps the air around the filament warm and that prevents it from uh, shrinking too much as it dry, as it cools and coming unstuck from the bed or even unstuck from itself. So without ventilation and without an enclosure, I may not even attempt to print this. Just save it for a later day when I have a better setup. All right, and lastly, PCTPE. Looks like this is a flexible filament and I should be able to print this. Not an especially interesting color, and it looks like it's a little bit less flexible than some of the TPUs that I've printed with before. So, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Not too excited about it. All right, let's get printing. These filament samples don't come with spools, so I designed this little thing with interchangeable arms so that whatever the diameter of the filament is, you can find the arms that fit it. Now we can take this loose end and stick it through one of these holes.
So the PCTPE is giving me trouble. That's the flexible filament. This was the first attempt here, and his legs can detach from the build plate, which happens sometimes. And so I fixed that problem by adding a brim. But then when it got to his head, it started printing this weird glob around the nozzle, which means that somehow the nozzle lost contact with the model, although the model was still stuck down. So then I printed the exact same thing again, and the exact same thing happened again. And it seemed to happen at the same spot, which is weird because it's not like a weak point or anything. So my theory is that there's some sort of corruption in the G code that's causing like a Z hop or something. Um, and so what I did was regenerate the G code, and now I'm trying it again. And this time I have a camera on it. So if it happens again, we'll be able to see why. So how do we do? All the PLA filaments printed out beautifully, including the recycled PLA filament from 3D Fuel. The eSun filaments were so badly wrapped that I couldn't print with them right away, and I had to completely rewrap each of them, which took like an hour. This is the first time I've gotten filaments in a maker box that had that problem, which is good because if it happened every time, I would probably quit because it's just honestly not worth the trouble. So hopefully it's a fluke. By the way, the model came from Thingiverse. It's called Low Poly Pug, and it was designed by Flowalistic. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. I like it because it's a decent test for stringing and overhangs without being too challenging. I did finally manage to get a decent print with the PCTBE flexible filament. Although it had been out of the bag for a couple of days and I think it absorbed a lot of moisture from the air because the surface finish is not great and it had the characteristic crackling sound you get when you're printing with a filament that has too much moisture in it. It's honestly much less flexible than other flexible filaments that I've printed with which have all been TBUs. And I wanted to test that a little bit more, so I also printed out a 0% infill model, meaning that it's completely hollow. And I had some layer adhesion issues. One of his feet fell off, and you can see that it's in the process of splitting down the middle. And compare that to a TPU print I did a little while ago, which is super flexible and totally durable. Speaking of feet falling off, these are the best prints that I managed to get with a PMMA filament. This stuff is just not that forgiving, and I ran out of filament before I got it dialed in and I might not even really be equipped with my printer to even print this stuff that well. I tried the acetone smoothing technique on one of these, and I bet you can't guess which one. It's the one that's missing both of its feet. I'm not sure what went wrong there. It might have been that my surface finish already wasn't that great because of, again, moisture in the filament, or it might have been because I was using nail polish remover, which is all that I had on hand, which is mostly acetone, but not pure acetone. Or another theory I have is that I had it in this fairly narrow jar which means that the acetone didn't have much surface area to vaporize. So if I had it in something like a wider tray, maybe it would have worked better. So that's seven more pugs for my collection, bringing the total to 53, not including alternate versions like the hollow ones I showed. Right now they all live in a cardboard box, but I'm going to be building a wooden frame to display them on the wall, sort of like an inset collection. So if you want to see that project or other 3D printing stuff, go ahead and subscribe.